Well, good evening and welcome to our Bible study this Wednesday night, April the 6th, 2021. So glad that you're joining me and uh, hope you've had a good week. And uh, have your Bibles in hand or your devices, whatever you'll be using to follow along with the scriptures tonight. We're back in 1 Thessalonians chapter 2 and continuing on where uh, Paul is continuing his defense of his ministry while he and his companions Silas and Timothy were there in Thessalonica. And uh, so far we have seen Paul's purpose uh, was to please God in everything that he did and that he was gentle in caring for the Thessalonians as he loved on them and uh, with the love of God uh, as he spoke with them and shared with them. And his desire was for them to walk worthy of God as they lived their lives uh, there uh, for him. So tonight we're going to be looking at verses 13 through 16 uh, where we find Paul sharing his thankfulness to God for their salvation uh, upon receiving the word of God. So uh, if you have your Bibles handy, I'm going to be reading from the New American Standard uh, and uh, beginning here in verse 13 of chapter 2. So let's read together. For this reason, we also constantly thank God that when you received the word of God, which you heard from us, you accepted it not as the word of men, but for what it really is, the word of God, which also performs its work in you who believe. For you, brethren, became imitators of the churches of God in Christ Jesus that are in Judea. For you also endured the same sufferings at the hands of your own countrymen, even as they did from the Jews, who both killed the Lord Jesus and the prophets and drove us out. They are not pleasing to God, but hostile to all men, hindering us from speaking to the Gentiles so that they may be saved, with the result that they always fill up the measure of their sins. But wrath has come upon them to the utmost. Well, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we just thank you so much for the time that we have together to study your word. Thank you for these that are joining me. And uh, Lord, we just pray for your spirit to give us understanding, Lord, that you will illumine your word so that we will know exactly uh, what you are trying to say to us, how it applies to our lives, and how that we can better serve you. Just pray that you will... Um, Search all of us afresh and anew, Lord, and reveal any unconfessed sin, any unclean thing in us that we haven't confessed to you. We pray that you reveal that sin to us so that we can confess it to you and ask for your forgiveness and be cleansed from all unrighteousness. Lord, we don't want anything hindering your spirit being able to speak to us through this time, through the word. Uh, and Lord, I just pray that you will help me. Uh, just to speak your truth. I pray that you will help me die to myself and that your spirit will just fill me afresh and anew and speak through me through this time uh, so that you will be glorified and we all will hear your word and be able to heed it as well. Thank you again for our time. We pray your blessings upon us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, again, so glad that you're joining me in tonight's um, title, if you may see it as it is printed out, uh, is Thank God. Okay, Thank God. And we are in 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 13 through 16. Now, uh, let's read verse 13 once again. For this reason, we also constantly thank God that when you received the word of God, which you heard from us, you accepted it, not as the word of men, but for what it really is, the word of God, which also performs its work in you who believe. For this reason, that phrase, what reason is Paul talking about here? Well, looking back to verse 12, it's Paul's desire for them to walk in a manner worthy, worthy of God. Excuse me. And the reason he strove to minister uh, with the highest level of pure intentions. For that reason, he wanted to be able to minister to them with the purest of motives, purest intentions, uh, and so that they would be saved and be able to walk in a manner worthy of God. Um, that's why we do that. So as we look at this verse in verse 13, Paul and his companions were thanking God for the salvation that took place in those new believers. Okay, He rejoiced 
that they accepted the gospel, that they believed and received Jesus as their Savior. Uh, it wasn't just Paul's clever words or Silas's or Timothy's, the words of men. The Thessalonians received what they shared because it was the word of God, the gospel of God, not something made up by Paul, but the true word of God. Now, they weren't thankful because they believed Paul. They were thankful to God because his spirit had given them understanding. Now think about this. Salvation is a supernatural thing. Okay, It's not something that, that we can fully explain exactly what happens inside our hearts or in, inside the heart of anyone who believes, anyone who is saved. We cannot save anyone on our, our own Okay, or, or save anybody ourselves. We simply share the gospel. We share the word of God. And God brings spiritual understanding for a person to believe and be saved. Okay, In 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14, Paul writes here to the Corinthians, But a natural man does not accept the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him, and he cannot understand them because they are spiritually appraised. So Paul it, it further speaks about uh, his reliance upon the Spirit and thus really our uh, uh, reliance upon the Spirit of God in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, that entire chapter, and how it is the Spirit of God that illumines our minds to understand spiritual things. The natural man or the common man, the unsaved man, cannot understand spiritual things. If we look back in, in chapter uh, 2 of 1 Corinthians here, uh, back to verse 10 and read that through verse 13. For to us God revealed them through the Spirit. For the Spirit searches all things, even the depths of God. For who among men knows the thoughts of a man except the Spirit of the man which is in him? Even so, the thoughts of God no one knows except the Spirit of God. Now we have received not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit who is from God, so that we may know the things freely given to us by God, which things we also speak, not in words taught by human wisdom, but in those taught by the Spirit, combining spiritual thoughts with spiritual words." So uh, praise God for that. Thank God that he gives us uh, his spirit who gives us understanding of spiritual things. Without the spirit giving us that understanding, we would not be able to comprehend anything about the spiritual nature of God and, and what he has done for us. Remember, it is the Holy Spirit that gives us understanding. When we hear the word of God, and brings us to the understanding of our need to be saved. The Holy Spirit is who draws us to God and gives us that understanding. And that's how the people here in Thessalonica were able to receive the word as coming from God and not men. Because the Holy Spirit revealed that to them. Of course, this is just further uh, defending Paul and his companions' ministry there. They constantly, as we go back to the first of that verse then, thank God for their salvation. Paul, Silas, Timothy are thanking God for the salvation of these new Thessalonian believers. Now, let me ask this question. Do we do that? Do we thank God for those we have been able to lead to Christ, lead to salvation? Do we thank God for those that we have simply seen be saved? Have you told have you told someone lately that you thank God for their salvation? A lot of times we might thank God for them and, and, and what they've done for us. But have we thanked God for their salvation? I know at times I have. I thank God that when my boys get sa got saved, I was very thankful for that. Thank you, Lord, that they came to know you 
as their personal Lord and Savior at an early age. That's what Debbie and I had prayed, even uh, in, a, in a way before they were conceived, and then definitely after they were conceived. We prayed for that, and we thanked God when that happened. That, that prayer was answered. Uh, but what about someone else? Just thanking God that they are saved. Because Paul and Silas and Timothy saw these Thessalonians, thought, saw their conversions. They are thanking God for their new brothers and sisters in Christ. But notice, the, look at this last phrase of the verse. The word of God, which also performs its work in you who believe. The word of God, the gospel, has not only saved them, but also continues to work in them in the way they are living their lives for Christ now. What we looked at back in, in, in chapter 1, particularly in, ver, in, in verse 2, Paul says, we give thanks to God always for all of you. And then in verses 6 and 7, the first part of 7, you also became imitators of us and of the Lord, having received the word in much tribulation with the joy of the Holy Spirit, so that you became an example. The Word of God was still working in their lives, not only for salvation, but also for sanctification. Okay. Now, as we continue into verse 14 of chapter 2 here, For you, brethren, became imitators of the churches of God in Christ Jesus that are in Judea. For you also endured the same sufferings at the hands of your own countrymen, even as they did from the Jews who both killed the Lord Jesus and the prophets and drove us out. Here in verse 14, Paul again calls them imitators, just like he did back in chapter 1, verse 6. The word of God has changed them, okay? They were no longer living like the world, pleasing men or pleasing themselves. They were now imitators of God, as well as the churches of God in Christ Jesus that are in Judea. Now think about that just for a little bit. The same God that saved the people in Judea saved the people in Thessalonica and in Philippi and in Corinth and in Rome and in all over the world and in us. Same God, same Savior, same gospel. That's what has changed them, because God is the same. And then Paul lets them know, you're not alone in your suffering. For you also endured the same sufferings at the hands of your own countrymen, even as they did from the Jews, who both killed the Lord Jesus and the prophets, and drove us out, Paul and his companions. Just as the Thessalonians were being ridiculed, facing opposition and persecution from those who lived around them, those in Judea were facing the same from those who lived around them, the Jews. And these are the ones that killed the Lord Jesus as well as drove Paul and his companions away. We find examples of that in Acts chapter 17. Note this. The world will always be in opposition to the gospel. The world will always be in opposition to the gospel. Jesus said in John 15, 20, if they persecuted me, they will also persecute you. Paul says in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 12, indeed, all who desire to live godly in Christ Jesus will be persecuted. Why? Simply because Satan hates us. Okay? And he hates the gospel. And he will use whatever and whomever he can to discourage us from staying true and faithful to the gospel and true and faithful to sharing it. He's going to go against us in any way that he can. Life was difficult for the Thessalonians, okay? But they were not alone. They were sharing in the same suffering that all Christians had, 
were at the time and would face, okay, including us Christians today. Paul did not want the Thessalonians to get discouraged about what they were having to face, the difficulties that they were uh, encountering. Being a Christian in a sin-sick world is not easy, okay? He wanted them, Paul wanted them to stay faithful and wanted them to remember what God had done for them and to remember the hope that they had in Jesus and he commend and, and, and remember he commended them for that and how they were exemplifying that hope uh, as he spoke about them back in chapter 1 verse 10 all right so he continues here in verse 15 to close out this passage uh, verse 15 who both killed the Lord Jesus and the prophets and drove us out here he says they are not pleasing to God but hostile to all men, hindering us from speaking to the Gentiles so that they may be saved, with the result that they always fill up the measure of their sins, but wrath has come upon them to the utmost. That phrase, they are not pleasing to God. Now, have we heard that before? Well, Paul continued to speak of the Jews here. And he makes sure that the Thessalonians understand these people are not pleasing to God. Now remember, he's spoken already of how he and they are to be God-pleasers, not man-pleasers. Here he makes sure they know that their persecutors are not pleasing God in their actions. Okay, So this would only encourage the Thessalonians, uh, the Thessalonian believers, in knowing that they were on God's side. And the persecutors were not. So they should be encouraged by that. And notice that that they're not pleasing to God, but also hostile to all men. They cause trouble for anybody and everyone. Okay, These misguided Jews, stuck in their own traditions and religion, did not even want Paul to try to share the gospel with the Thessalonians hindering us from speaking to the Gentiles so that they may be saved. Throughout Paul's ministry, he was hindered by the Jews everywhere he went. Uh, and sometimes some of them would come to where he was uh, from another place just to cause trouble. Even Jesus now speaks against the Jewish leaders in hindering him. In Luke chapter 11, verse 52, they were always trying to disrupt uh, or hinder the gospel from being shared or spread. But notice the last half of verse 16. Paul here reminds us of the grim result of not following the Lord. With the result that they always fill up the measure of their sins, but wrath has come upon them to the utmost. These Jews that were hindering Paul, and in basically anyone that was hindering the gospel being shared, their continued rebellion against God and his Christ is building, okay? And God is still giving them a chance, but there is a limit to his grace. In that, there will come a point where time for them to repent has run out. Their sins were great, these Jews especially. Think about this. They had killed the prophets of God uh, that God had sent to them to help them. And then they killed Jesus, the, the Messiah, their Messiah that they had been long awaiting for. They, they rejected him and they killed him. Okay, Now they're hindering the gospel being preached, not only to the Jews, but also to the Gentiles. Basically, they're hindering it to be shared with Everybody, okay? God's patience is wearing thin. Their sins continue to build until, one, they repent, or two, their time here on earth is done. And God is, that's it. Wrath, that word wrath. We hear that a lot of times, and, and we know it's bad. Nobody likes uh, facing anybody's wrath, uh, but definitely not the wrath of God. The Greek word used here uh, means 
God's settled opposition to and displeasure with sin. Now, it's not an un uncontrollable outburst of anger, which is a lot of time man's wrath is. You, you get to a boiling point and you just lash out. This is not uncontrollable, okay? God's always in control. So it's not an un uncontrollable outburst of anger, but God's controlled indignation towards sin that slowly builds. It's his holy hatred toward all that is unholy. His mercy and his grace is finally exhausted. Now, I don't know about you, but I never want to be on the end of God's exhausted mercy and grace. I always want to be in God's mercy and grace, not to the end of his where it's exhausted toward me. Paul reveals here what will happen to those who continue to refuse salvation through Jesus. Ultimately, they will suffer God's utmost wrath, which is eternal separation from his mercy and his grace, and thus will be cast into the lake of fire and be in torment for all eternity. Not something we want to even have to think about. This is what awaits anyone who rejects Jesus. Now, if we really let that sink in, anyone who rejects Jesus will have to suffer hell. And we're not talking about just some real hot day or anything like that. We're talking about eternal separation from God in His mercy, His love, His grace, and for all of eternity, burn in the lake of fire and never any release from that, ever. That should spur us on to share the gospel like crazy, to, so people will be saved from that. We don't want that to happen even to our worst enemies. Yeah, we might be mad at somebody or really uh, disgusted with somebody, but do we really want them to suffer for all of eternity? that bad? Paul is reminding the Thessalonians here, let me remind you from what you've been saved. You have been saved from this hell. Remember that. They know of this salvation and they know Jesus as their Savior now because of Paul's ministry there with them in Thessalonica. Paul and Silas and Timothy sharing the gospel. They are saved from hell because Paul and Silas and Timothy and the others that may have been there with them, with their companions, had come and shared the gospel and they received it as the word of God because the Holy Spirit gave them that understanding and they were saved. Eternally secure. Not to have to face hell. Now they have that hope in Christ, knowing that one day they will spend eternity in heaven. No matter what they may face, what persecution they may have to endure, they have a home in heaven awaiting them. So thank God for salvation. Thank God for those who shared the gospel with us. Thank God for the hope we have in Jesus. Thank God we are sealed with His Spirit. Thank God this life of suffering is only a moment compared to all of eternity in His glory. Thank God we have been redeemed. Thank God for His love, mercy, and grace. Thank God. Thank God. Let's pray. Father, we do thank you for your love, your mercy, and your grace, for giving us salvation, for giving us your Son. Jesus, thank you for loving us enough to come to this sin-sick world and have to live amongst us and to endure all that you endured even before you were crucified on that cruel cross. But that endurance of that is beyond us. 
Thank you for being, being willing to face that cross, to die for our sins. Thank you for your resurrection and your resurrection power that you give to us. May we never forget that. May we always be thankful. Holy Spirit, thank you for giving us the understanding that we need giving us the understanding of our need of salvation. And thank you for giving us understanding on how we can live our lives for you. Lord, I just pray that you've been able to use this time for your glory. And I pray that you've been able to use me. And uh, Lord, we just thank you for your word. Again, the encouragement that you give us and the enlightening that we receive from it. We pray that you'll help us to go out and serve you even more faithfully and better. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you again for joining me tonight. Uh, Lord willing, we'll continue. You may be able to finish chapter 2 uh, next Wednesday, uh, picking up in verse 17. So if you want to read ahead, you can do that. And we'll see how the Lord leads if he continues to lead us uh, through the rest of that book next week. But uh, so glad that you joined me. I uh, hope that you'll be able to, to join us uh, as we come back together to worship on Sunday morning uh, this coming week. Until then, I pray that you will stay safe, stay healthy, and uh, God bless you.